Now, this is just um, for the sake of example, you know, one of the things that I've put together as an alternative to the four simple tests. This is the ATS suggested factor test. Now, again, they're up for this. In the report, they have said that they would look at an alternate points-based factor test. And that to me is far, far more sensible because it allows you to give appropriate weighting to certain things. So you see here, just as an example, the fact that I'm a citizen, a resident or a visitor has a different weighting. The fact that I'm intending to be overseas one, two or three years, that I've been away for a certain period. All these things are relevant in determining this. And again, I've been doing this for 25 years. So this is some of the key elements that are there. Now you could add and subtract, you can modify these to, to get the cows come home, but this is really a far more simple system. And if they acknowledge and agree with expats through the chambers, through the likes of us, through appropriate you know, communication with the likes of us overseas, through the likes of us overseas, then we would be able to, you know, have a situation where, you know, we would feel comfortable in that test, where it would be more relevant to everybody's circumstances. So in this particular case, if you got 16 or less, you would be a resident. And I've just given some examples there of what would be. So someone obviously is definitely a non-resident on the right-hand side, might own their property overseas. They intend to be away indefinitely. They're heavily weighted issues, whereas someone who's only going away and living in a service department and will only be away a couple of months, that person is heavily weighted to be a resident. And this is far more appropriate in the modern age to reflect all of these things. So something along this line would be a far better situation and one we should be collectively putting forward as an alternative.